Good morning, everybody. It's good to have each one of you. So good to see your smiling faces and so thankful to be in God's house. Amen. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer and ask the Lord to be with our time together. And, you know, the Bible says we're two or three gathered in his name. He is there. And so we know that we're gathered in his name. We're here to worship and he is in this place. We're going to ask you to, uh, if you have a need on your heart, um, if you'd like to signify that by an upraised hand and we'll go to the Lord of Prayer. I'm so thankful that God knows every need and, and uh, he knows it to every minute detail. So if you would, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love and your grace, your mercy. God, we pray that you would be with each one that is uh, with us today, watching online or, or here in the service. God, you know each one of us have so many needs and uh, from the small to the great, Lord, we just entrust them into your hands. We pray that you would touch each one that's sick and uh, heal them. If it be your will, Lord, we pray for those that have financial needs and uh, maybe relationship issues. Lord God, we pray you just undertake for each one. For those that don't know you as their personal Savior, Lord, I pray that this would be the day that they would accept you as the Lord of their life. We thank you, we praise you for what you're doing, what you're going to do. Be with each song that's sung, each thing that's said. It would honor and glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. But God demonstrated his own love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I'm thankful for that, and I'm redeemed today because of that. This old hymn of the church says, I'm redeemed. If you're redeemed today, sing it like you mean it. I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed from the darkness of the night that so thickly enveloped my soul. In my heart there have gleamed rays of wonderful light where the waves of thy glory do I'm redeemed, praise the Lord. all sin and I'm walking in the light I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb I'm redeemed by thy blood from the power of the grave and the victory I have over death oh that wonderful flood oh I felt its power to save when I plunge in his fat on blue I'm redeemed, praise the Lord. I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I am saved from all sin, and I'm walking in the light. I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I'm redeemed from all sin, and I'm walking in the light. And that spirit illumines my way. I've no fear now within for the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day. I'm redeemed. Praise the Lord. I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I am saved from all sin, and I'm walking in the light. I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. The redeemed, they shall walk in the pathway of which shine brighter and brighter each day. They shall talk with I'm redeemed, praise the Lord. I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I am saved from all sin, and I'm walking in the light. I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. 
remain in me and I will remain in you, Jesus said. Since Jesus came into my heart, floods of joy or my soul like the sea billows roll. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. I have good in my soul for which long I had sought since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into the joy of my soul like the sea billows roll since Jesus came into my heart I possessed of a hope that is steadfast and sure Jesus came into my heart and no dark clouds of doubt now my pathway obscure since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Floods of joy o'er my soul Like the sea billows Jesus came into my heart Like the sea billows roll Since Jesus came into my heart I shall go there to dwell In that city I know Since Jesus came into my heart And I'm happy, so happy As onward I go soul shall be joyful in the Lord and shall rejoice in his salvation there is joy in the Lord I will sing hallelujah for there's joy in the Lord. My heart with rapture as I rest on his word. I will trust in his promise. I will shout, I am free in my blessing, loving Savior. I have sweet victory. There is joy in the Lord. I am here evermore. I am resting in his 
His favor I am safe and secure For the light is shining brighter on my path Every day cheers my happy soul with rapture as I I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. Here's an old song from the Church of God hymnal. It's called A Song of Joy. Been a while since we sang it, but there's glory, joy, glad joy in the fullness of God's love. Salvation's free, glad joy to all of Adam's fallen reign. We'll tell to all, both far and near, of saving, keeping grace. There's joy, glad joy. Oh, 
flowing from above. There's joy. And we have joy as Jesus said in this world you will have trouble not you might you will but be of good cheer for I have overcome the world he has overcome so that we can overcome if we have a relationship with him it says we are more than conquerors we are overcomers in his name Seated above, enthroned in the Father's love. Destined to die, poured out for all mankind. God's only Son, perfect and spotless one. He never sinned. But suffered as if he did. All authority, every victory is yours. All authority, every victory. Awesome and powerful, 
awesome and great is your name. You overcame. Amen. So thankful he overcame, aren't you? We're gonna so thankful to have uh, all of us uh, here singing together. It, it's still after a year after a year uh, that we had last year where we weren't able to sing together up here. It's just such a blessing. And uh, having all of our singers and musicians using their talent for the Lord, and I'm thankful for that, aren't you? And uh, that we can come and worship freely and come in, and, and I'm just so thankful. Um, I'm going to ask Adley to come at this time. She's got a special for us. I can't seem to forget The whispers open up a door To a world called insecure No mean girls don't remember what they said Sticks and stones may break my bones But no one ever warned me you caught the very important message in that song that doesn't matter what people say uh, the playwright Tyler Perry once said it's not what you're called it's what you answer to and you know there are a lot of people that say a lot of mean things type a lot of mean things tweet a lot of mean things but Lord help us to find our worth 
in his word and what he says about us and who we are in him. It is only because the cross of Calvary that we can have a relationship with God through his son Jesus Christ and truly discover our worth. Amen. At Calvary, my sins were erased. At Calvary, Jesus took my Yeah. 
He is so good. God is so good. Sing it with us. God is so good. He's so good to me. He died for me. He died for me. He died for me. He's so good to me. And God answers prayer. Does he answer prayer? God answers prayer. God answers prayer. He's so good to me, and I love him so. Can you say amen? It's good to be in the house of the Lord. And what a sweet spirit in this place this morning. And I want to thank our musicians and everybody listening to the Lord. We don't, these special songs, we don't orchestrate them. Uh, We just let the Lord lead. And you know, it's all about joy in Jesus this morning, the worship. And then Adley comes and talks about our worth found in Him. That everybody can say a lot of things, but it's truly what God says about you that counts. For He made you. You know, it's just like reading product reviews online. I don't put a lot of stock in a lot of the negative ones because there's people out there that as my grandma would say, they wouldn't be happy if you hung them with a new rope. So they're going to complain about something, right? But I often look at what the product manufacturer has to say about their product. And not that we're products, but we're creations. So I don't listen to what everybody else has to say, or I try not to. I listen to what the manufacturer says about me. And he says... That he, I'm created in his image and so are you. That we've all sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. We've all stumbled. But because he sent his only son to die for me and you on Calvary. There's amazing grace at Calvary. The second verse of the song Zelmi sang. It said the preaching of the cross has not done much today. And that's true. But I got news for you. As long as there's breath in my body and I'm standing here at the Chavez First Church of God as your pastor, Calvary will be talked about. Because the blood of Jesus is the only thing that will save us. I know it's not popular. I know it triggers some people. But let me tell you something. It's the only thing that saves. So you can just say amen or old man, however that hits you. But I'm thankful for Calvary, and I'm thankful for Jesus. And we started last week, and I'm going to tell you, if you missed last week's service, you missed a blessing. That's why it's so important, and I'll throw this in. I know you might think I'm meddling. It's so important that when you can be, you should be in the house of the Lord, especially if you name the name of Christ as your Savior. I know There are times, I know there are things that happen. 
if you're legitimately sick, stay home. I know Jesus wants us to share, but I don't want you to share your germs. I don't think he does either. But if you can be, and you're going on a trip, that's all right. Just don't go on a trip every weekend. We miss you when you're not here. But we talked about last week the secret of happiness, and we're going to be in this series uh, for another week, this week and next week. So we're going to be in the book of Philippians, the book of Philippians, and we're going to talk about the secret of happiness. And we're going to be in Philippians today. In the New Testament, I'll give you a moment to find it. But, you know, everybody is searching for happiness, aren't they? Even our, our Constitution says life, liberty, and pursuit. Yes, yeah, somebody got it. See, a lot of times we just want to say happiness, pursuit of happiness. And a lot of people are pursuing things that they think are going to make them happy. In fact, the prophetess and poet Cheryl Crow sings, if it makes you happy. There's a danger in that doctrine and song because the problem with just seeking happiness in things, happiness by definition is only comes from outside circumstances. Philippians the whole theme of the letter that Paul wrote to the church at Philippi, they were going through tough times. They were having some issues. They were a little discouraged because the world around them was changing. Hmm, sound familiar? So here are believers that have put their faith and hope in Christ Jesus and they are discouraged and Paul is writing to them, Paul helped found this church. In fact, I love the three people that founded this church. A little slave girl that believed in Jesus Christ, who was mistreated, but then she became, and when we say slave in biblical terms, it's not like slavery that we think of in America, but this slave indeed was mistreated. This young girl helped found the church. Then there was Lydia, a female entrepreneur. How's that for women's live, ladies? <laughs> yeah, the world thinks they, they got it. No, the Bible puts women in the proper place. You just got to read it. But she was a, an entrepreneur who sold... Um, textiles and so she helped found the church and then guess who else was one of the founding members this will this will get you when Paul and Silas were put in prison now remember Paul wrote this letter and he's in prison now writing it but when they were in prison before him and Silas there was a jailer that was there and God shook the jail and opened the doors, and the jailer was about to kill himself because he thought, uh-oh, prison break, I'm dead. But Paul stopped him. They went to his house, and the jailer and the whole household got saved, and that's one of the founding members of the church at Philippi. So you think you got it bad. Here was a suicidal jailer, a mistreated slave, and a female entrepreneur who was looked down upon in her culture who started this church. And Paul is writing from prison. Now, if you're in prison, do you think a theme of a letter you would write would be joy? Probably not. It'd be gloom, despair, and agony on me. <clears throat> or it might be Send me a file. Oh, y'all don't watch too many movies, I can tell. <laughs> anyway, it wouldn't be an encouraging letter, but Paul has the secret to joy. Not just happiness that is 
contained in outward circumstances. The word joy, the Greek word in the Bible is keros, which means to come from within, to come from the inside out. So we can have joy no matter what's going on around us because it's on the inside coming out. There was a lady in a camp meeting named Sister Jones. I love Sister Jones. She'd get up there, and her husband used to sing with her before he passed away, and they would get happy. She just It'd be them singing with a tambourine, or as the song leader in Ohio used to call it, a tangerine. And they'd get up there, and they'd start hitting that, that tambourine. I think I got one back here. Well, I used to. Anyway, they'd start hitting that, and something on the inside. Working on the outside, something on the inside, working on the outside. It must be the Spirit of the Lord. Hey, if I didn't light your fire, your woods went. And he'd get a little happy, and her husband would pull them bretch of legs up, and he'd start tapping just a little bit. And they'd be singing something on the inside, working on the outside. Must be the Spirit of the Lord. But Paul, writing to the church at Philippi in chapter 1, starting at verse 20, reading these 10 verses in your hearing. But he opens this letter with this. He's talking about himself, and in this he gives the secret. Because remember last week we talked about the first secret is having the mind of Christ, thinking about others more highly than yourself, putting other people before yourself. We used to sing an old song in children's church, put Jesus first, others second, and then yourself at the end of the line. Then you'll find true joy in your life. That's J-O-Y. Jesus first, others second, yourself at the end of the line. But he, he opens the letter, and I know we're going backwards, but sometimes... To understand where you were, you got to see where you go. And so Paul is showing them where he's going in this letter. And then he, we're going back to the beginning. And he says, according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness as always, so now whether it be in life or by death, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. For to me, now listen to his perspective, to live is Christ and to die is gain. And then he goes on to explain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I should choose, I want not. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you for your furtherance and for your joy of the faith, that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ for me by my coming to you again. Only let your conversation, and that word has changed meanings in the King James, what they mean is let your countenance, let your character, let your demeanor, the way you carry yourself, be as it becomes the gospel of Jesus Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I can hear of your affairs that you stand fast in one spirit with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. And in nothing, terrified by your adversaries, ooh, if you write in your Bible, Mark that. And in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. 
For you it is given on the behalf of Christ not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict which you saw in me and now here to be in me. Now I know that that's a lot of King James English, and you know the saints of God that have put their faith and hope in Jesus, you should be shouting right now. But the problem is, I don't know about you, but I do this sometimes. I get caught up in the King James English. Nothing wrong with King James. That's what we use here. Uh, there are other good translations. But sometimes we get hung up in that and we don't realize what it's saying. Because how many times have you used perdition in a sense? How many of you, Anna, don't raise your hand, but how many of you even know what that means? Right? And we just kind of roll through it, and we're like, well, I read my Bible today, bless God. I have no idea what it meant or how it applies to my life, but I read it. No, we've got to not just read it, we've got to apply it, right? Did you know, if with cerebral palsy, my leg hurts in every day that ends in Y. And I don't like to take medicine, but ever so often I've got to take something to ease the pain. But, you know, I can look at that bottle for days and just read it. For pain, take, da 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 right? I can stand there and look at it all the time. Does it work? No. My wife and I have workout DVDs. They're wonderful. Every so often, I'm looking for another DVD, and I'll pull the door open, and I'll pull them out, and I'll look at them. Do they work? No. Oh, yeah. Here's another one. She got some DVDs that you could sit in a chair and do, and then she gave them away. And I like them. But if you just sit in a chair and you look at it, does it work? No, you got to apply it. So if we just read God's word, but we have no idea what it says, or we don't apply it, will it work and change your life? Absolutely not. This is what he's saying. He's coming from a whole different mindset. This will be a truth bomb dropped on this church. Because what he says is, it would just be like if I stood here as your pastor and said, I'm going to keep living and doing what God wants me to do, and I'm going to glorify him. And if I die... I'm going to be in heaven. And then I might start singing, Lately I've got leaving, leaving on my mind. Now, some of you will take that at face value. Others of you, the devil will start working on your mind. And you might even get out there in the vestibule. You might even make it to the steps. Before you get up with somebody and say, come here, did you hear what he said? He said he's going to die, then he's singing lately, he got leaving on his mind. Wait a minute, is he going to another church? Wait a minute, is he sick? Is he going to die? What are we going to do? Right? Now, that's the way they were. Wait a minute, to live is Christ? What's that mean? And to die is gain? Wait a minute, is Paul sick? I thought he was supposed to come see us. But then he goes on to explain it. See, that little verse, to live is Christ, to die is gain, we see it on T-shirts, we see it on cups and mugs. But what he's saying is, I'm caught between two realities. Because in my soul, I know that God has saved me. I know that when I die, I'm going to go to heaven and spend eternity with him. And down here, it's tough. But living down here, is Christ because I can be an example I can be work I can do work and I can be happy because I know that the purpose that I have is in Jesus Christ and I can fulfill that purpose I don't have to chase about a bunch of other things I have my purpose and my joy in him 
Jesus said, I've told you these things so that your joy may be complete or full. So we have this joy in Jesus. And how do we plug into it? We do what he's called us to do. If we're saved, we tell the world about his love. In the 1940s and 50s, all over the South, you could tune in your radio early in the morning about 5.30, 6 a.m., and inevitably you would hear some Southern Gospel Quartet, the Blackwood Brothers, the Sunny Mountain Boys, or whoever singing, Give the world a smile each day, helping others on life's way. That's our job, to give them a smile, to be joyful. It doesn't mean that we're happy all the time. It doesn't mean we walk with a fake manufactured smile. But even when we're in pain, our eyes will be joyful because we know what we're here for. We don't have to chase about the other things because we got it on the inside, right? So that mindset, when we walk into our life on Monday and everything is going bananas, we can still have joy he said, because I am going to live in this moment and glorify Jesus Christ. Amen? And he tells them, you do the same thing. And whether I see you or don't see you, then I'll hear about you and that will make me joyful. Because I'm living on for you. I'm living on to be your example. And you know, we talked about this years ago, that our job as believers, it's not just the pastor's job, it's not just uh, the Sunday school teacher's job, it's all of our job. If we said yes to Jesus, no to our sinful behavior, and we serve Him every day the best we know how, then we're on our way to heaven, we're loving Jesus, and it's our job to make sure that the family of God and those outside the family know about Jesus and we help them get to heaven. So we're doing it for them. That's the purpose. To make sure that everybody has an opportunity to say yes to Jesus. And to get to heaven, right? He told them there's going to be conflict. There's going to be conflict. But, don't be terrified by your adversaries. Don't be terrified by the news. Don't be terrified by the stuff coming down the pike. Because even when you go through hard times, you still have joy. Because for you, you're going to know, hey, I'm still saved. Because if I wasn't going through hard times, look at what he says. It's, to you, it's salvation. If you weren't going through tests and trials from the enemy of your soul, guess what? That means he got you. Every believer goes through struggles. Every believer goes through, everybody goes through something. But every believer will go through things. Just because we're saved doesn't mean everything's going to be hunky-dory. But he said, this will be a sign of your salvation. So don't be afraid of the people that come against you. Jesus told his disciples, even people are going to come against you, but they don't hate you, they hate me. When we name the name of Christ, people are not going to be happy about that. But that doesn't mean we get all dogmatic and yell at them because they're mad. We love them. Doesn't mean we say it's okay for what they do. Doesn't mean we participate in it. But we love them. And he says, because this has been given on behalf of Christ, know that you don't have to be afraid of your adversaries. They will come. But you can have joy knowing that to live is Jesus. To live in Christ, saying yes to him every day, is fulfilling your purpose. And to die is, gr is great gain. I saw a little, a little uh, saying uh, this weekend. It said, to be happy, you must have three things in life. Someone to love, something to do, and something to look forward to. I thought, wow, Jesus fills all those. Someone to love, 
We love Him because He first loved us. Something to do in everything we do. Glorify or set God apart. Lift Him up. That's what that scripture means. And then thirdly, something to look forward to. Paul said in this life, we will have, it's just light affliction. It's just minor troubles compared to what heaven's going to be like. So we have something to look forward to. The problem is this. What we do, let's pretend that this piece of rope is, is my life, your life, okay? And we're going to pretend that it's even longer than it really is, and it just goes on forever. And where this black mark is to the end is our life here on earth. From this all the way to the other side, on and on and on, is eternity that will never end. The Bible says no man can serve two masters. If we have not accepted Jesus in our life, and that's simply asking Him to come into our life, turning away from our sin, that big word is repenting, and then saying yes to Him every day, living a life that is pleasing to Him by His word, and also following Him in water baptism, that doesn't save you, but it is a sign to the world that I'm a child of God. Right, Rob? Or, if you don't accept Jesus, there's eternity apart from Him, eternal torment. The Bible speaks of that. In fact, Jesus spoke more of hell than He did of heaven. The problem is, if this is all eternity, we focus more on this part, don't we? It's because we can what we can see. We focus on that. We focus on that side of things. In fact, if we're not careful, and kids don't try this at home, we can get wrapped up in it. And it will choke us down. When we start seeking other things, when we start seeking other things other than Jesus, when we don't have a mindset that to live is to glorify Jesus, I'm going to live like I've got a thousand years to glorify Jesus, but I'm also going to live like tomorrow could be my last and I'm going to see eternity in sight. i got something to look forward to if I've accepted Jesus. But we can allow this, we can focus on so many of those things and that's why true joy eludes us. We allow things to just continually warp us. We don't allow the Lord to lead us through difficult seasons of life. Or maybe we try, but it gets too hard for us. And we need to stop and say, God, I need you to walk me through this dark valley of grief. I need you to walk me through this dark valley of depression. I need you to walk me through that. And I need you to restore the joy, as David said. The psalmist said, restore the joy of my salvation. And he will do that. Amen? may not be instantly, but he will. Instead of getting wrapped up in this life, we realize when we accept Jesus and we kneel at Calvary, that supernaturally when we repent of our sin and say yes to Jesus and no to sin and we walk according to the way that He wants us to, we are then on our way to heaven and I'm so glad and we don't have to worry about being bound by this life. Supernaturally, the, who the Son sets free, we're free indeed. So when Jesus sets us free, we are free indeed and we have joy unspeakable and full of glory. That doesn't mean we're happy all the time. That doesn't mean that we don't grieve. That doesn't mean that we don't get upset because maybe our children are not in uh, uh, living the way that they should. But that means that we still have joy and we got something to look forward to. The Gaither Vocal Band sings a song said, I'm on my way to heaven and I'm so glad. Well, I'm on my way to heaven, and I'm so glad, and I want you to come with me. And you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and everybody. But to do that, you've got to say yes to Jesus. And the secret to happiness is to every day remember, hey, to live is to glorify and lift Jesus up every day in everything I do. And if I die, 
I'm going my way to heaven. That's saying yes. Now, I know that the devil, he's good at his job, and he goes to church too. Did you know the devil's more faithful to church than some church people I know? He's here every Sunday. But, you know, there's times he'll lean down, he'll go, right when I'm preaching right now, he's saying, see, you tried all this stuff. You know it, it don't work for you. Yes, it does. Oh, but you're so sad. You've got so much going on. You've lost this one, or you've had this happen. Hold on, honey. The Bible says I choose to believe what God says instead of what the world says or what my feelings say. By the way, your faith in God is greater than your feelings. You know, it's not just our words and other people's words that can tear us down. It's our feelings and what we think about. The Bible says renew your mind through Jesus Christ. We talked about it a few weeks ago in Philippians where it says think on the good things. When the times get hard, when you feel like you're getting wrapped up in this life, remember, if you've accepted Jesus, you can say, hey, yeah, it's tough right now, but I'm on my way to heaven. Yeah, this person's driving me bananas, but I'm on my way to heaven. I'll throw this in for free. I might be meddling, but yeah, I hope you love me anyway. That family of mine, I don't understand why they have this political stance or why they do this or why they do that, and I don't even want to go to Thanksgiving with them. In fact, that one, you know, if he chokes, Lord, and you want to take him, that'd be all right. Oh, y'all looking all sanctified like you ain't never had them thoughts. But when you're sitting around your, what's it called, Thanksgiving table, and you may be looking and missing some people, or you may be aggravated at someone, and nobody in here but people I know getting upset because Aunt so-and-so didn't make your favorite dish, remember, you got more to go to heaven for than to fuss about that. And we live in a country still where we can have thanksgiving and be thankful. Amen? That's the secret to happiness. You know, one thing that I've learned in living away from my family and not able to see them as often as I'd like, I've learned to enjoy the time I have. Right? Right? And God helped me every day to let the joy of him flow out of us. Even when we get stressed. Even when it's tough. And yeah, I'm just preaching to me too, okay? And you get to listen. But when we have the mindset to live, everything we do is Christ. Let's point to him. And the die is gain. That's the secret to happiness. Don't get wrapped up in the temporal things of this world. I don't know what God said to you today. I appreciate your kind attention. Our live stream audience, if the Lord's speaking to your heart, if you've never said yes to him and surrendered your life to him, I pray you do that today. Or maybe you're just struggling and you need, as the psalmist said, to restore the joy of your salvation to you. You can pray that. May God bless you. If you're here in this audience,